In this video, I'm going to show you how to replace a limestone door sill. You see the sill we have here has a big crack in it. You can't really repair these, so the best thing to do is just to replace it. A word of caution, I believe this is a fairly difficult job for your average homeowner, but if that doesn't scare you away, uh, first thing, I'm breaking apart the sill with a hammer and a chisel. Once we get the sill out of the way, it's time to get rid of this old mortar. If you notice, I'm hitting the mortar from the side. If I were to hit the mortar from the front, I could accidentally hit the brick and jar a brick loose. Then we got a mess on our hands. You see here, we have, uh, you can see the rim joists, the subfloor, and her wood flooring in there. And this is a great way for bugs and cold air to get into the house. So we're going to fix this and waterproof it with some flashing tape. Now that's a Pella brand flashing tape. And it was really nice stuff. It was really nice and sticky. There was some roofing paper or tar paper behind the brick that was in fairly good shape, but I ripped off a couple pieces of that flashing tape and repaired a couple of the spots that were damaged. And then I'm gonna put a nice big layer on underneath that subfloor and her wood flooring, and it's gonna seal everything and it's gonna overlap onto the roofing paper. So if water were to get behind our new sill, it would hit the flashing tape and then dribble on to that roofing paper and then dribble behind that brick and then hopefully have a spot to dry. All right, time to mix up some mortar. I like to make my own mortar. They do sell pre-mixed mortar, but I don't really care for it. It's too coarse and it's not really nice to work with. So I mix up my own mortar. The ratio is two scoops of sand to one scoop of mortar. And then we add some water and mix it up. Now I don't, I'm being careful, I'm just making a small batch. I don't want to make it too soupy or too wet. So I'm just adding a little bit of water at a time. So you see here, we have some shims in place. This is your secret for success, especially if you're a homeowner. I set, I dry set the sill so it's tight to the underneath of the door sill. And I did that with these shims. I removed the door sill and when I replace it with mortar underneath, it's going to be tight. The reason this is difficult is because you want to set the sill perfectly before the mortar sets up. If that mortar sets up before the door sill is set, it, it's not going to bond and then you got to redo everything. We don't want to do that. So you see I wet the brick a little bit with some water and that's going to give me a little more working time. I place a thin layer of mortar on the bricks and then I'm going to gently place the sill in place on top of the shims. And again, the shims are helping me hold the door sill tight to the door frame. Okay, we're pretty good that way. But more importantly, for the pitch here, yeah, we're more than good. Let's see the other one here. Yeah, nice pitch on it. Okay. All right, I got the dorsal in place. It's gonna pitch water just in case something happens. It's waterproof underneath. And now it's time to do the finishing touch. We're just gonna set it. We're tuck pointing underneath the sill. And we're just jamming mortar under there and make sure that the thing's rock solid with mortar. There's our finished product. I came back the next day, I had some painter's tape and I put that on the lime still and then I caulked everything so it looked nice and perfect. And there we go. Let me know if you have any questions. See you on the next one.